Welcome to the Taylor May Tasty Podcast. I'm Taylor, retired serial quitter turned goal boss coach, speaker, and consultant. I believe a beautiful life starts with a beautiful mindset. Join me as we amplify confidence, resilience, and actionable tools on the road to quit quitting on you and your vision. You are worthy of your goals. So let's go get there. Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of Taylor May Tasty, the podcast. Today I am so beyond thrilled to introduce you to our special guest, the true definition of a goal-oriented badass who pushed through nursing school through the pandemic and also became an emergency room trauma nurse at one of the top hospitals in the nation, which is a level one trauma center while still going through the pandemic. She has owned her resilience time and time again, and I am excited for her to share a little glimpse into her wild ride of a life. On top of that, she is my BFF. Please help me in welcoming Mrs. Rhea Ortiz to Taylor Me Tasty, the podcast. Hi, friend. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I miss you already. I know we had grand plans to do to record this podcast in person, but the weekend really just flew by as it always does when we're together. So thank you for being here. Of course, of course. It really did fly by. And uh, just so everybody knows, I did leave my voice in Texas. So (laughs) I sound a little bit wild right now, but I love it. It's just how it was supposed to be. <laughs> Good times. Uh, so, yeah, we have a very unique uh, origin story, if you will, a BFF origin story of how our friendship started. And I don't even remember who. So we started on Instagram. Mm-hmm. But, like, who sent the first DM? Who I think it was probably me. <laughs> I feel like we should go back and look one day, but it may take forever through all of our messages over the years, but I feel like it was probably me. I remember seeing you and you were starting Weight Watchers or involved in Weight Watchers, and I was also doing Weight Watchers, and I remember you being so cool, and I think it was probably me because you were like in the same-ish area as I was, and I wanted to meet up with some like-minded people, and maybe you were hosting a meetup. I don't remember, but I think it was probably me. I'm I'm the one who usually makes the first move. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, okay. So it was a slide into the DM situation and then somehow turned into, I was planning a hiking day and yeah. then it became you, me, and my good friend, Maria. And so the very first time that we were ever going to meet, we were going on a hike. So not like coffee, we were going straight into, hey, come over to my house, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna drive together on a hike, and um, yeah, I don't know, like what was your husband saying? <laughs> um, he was very nervous, he was just trying to make sure I didn't get killed. Um, I think they just didn't understand, I'm sure your husband as well, like the way our friendship was working at the time and it was kind of odd even explaining it to like my mom like what you're going on a hike with who from where and how far away like are you sure this is going to be okay um so I think it was just a little bit uncomfy for other people but I was ready and like oh I think we're already like really good friends and I'm totally comfortable and we know each other very well through social media so what the heck why not take this (laughs) next step in our relationship I love it. And so I plan this hike and I think that it's only about 40 minutes away. Yes. But in reality, it was closer to like a two hour drive. I don't know how that got, <laughs> that got mixed up. We were basically like on our way to Vegas at some point. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, we are going to yeah. get there. But also we run out of service. Like we, we go so deep into the forest <laughs> that we have no service. So we can't even be like, promise, she's not a serial killer. We're fine. Um, So we go go on this amazing hike. It was super fun. And it just was crazy how natural the conversation went and how similar we were and things like that. Yes. 
I agree. <laughs> it was wild. I think it was just like one of those moments where we were just meant to be together that day. And I remember just feeling so safe and sharing things with you and you sharing things with me. And we just, it was instant connection. There was never a dull moment. It wasn't like one of those weird, I don't know what to say. I don't know what she's thinking. Like there was no forced conversation. And since then there never has been with us. And I think that's one thing I've always valued of our friendship. Like that's just who we are. No, we're yes. friends. <laughs> You know, small talk. Exactly. The, the deep talk. Um, yeah, which brings me to my next thing about our our uh, friendship is I sent you a crazy ass text message last year. Yeah. That I had been marinating on for quite a while. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even like say this out loud. But if I'm going to tell anybody, I'm going to tell my bestie. And so I sent you a text that said, I want to run a marathon. And I said, heck <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> uh, it's like those memes that say, you know, get you a friend that's not picking you up from jail. Like it's like the friend that's next to you in the, in the jail cell. <laughs> I think that was the moment I realized that we were both little psychopaths. Yeah, definitely. It? Who does yeah. that? Who decides <laughs> they want to do that? We do. I know. But I think we can both say with like, so much energy that now we're so thankful that we're on this together. Absolutely. And I've told you this before. There's no way I would even make it 10. I think we're 10 weeks into this now yes. at this point. Like there's no way I even would have made it this far without our constant accountability with each other. Because I'm like, oh, I got to run because Taylor's going to ask me when I'm going to do it if I don't do it. So she's going to ask where my posts are, where the pics are, where's my results, my stats. <laughs> So I need what do I proof. do when I don't want to? Exactly. I get my butt up and I do what I have to do. So 100% agree. And I feel like it's even brought us closer together. So here for Definitely. it all. Definitely. So on episode three, I kind of talked about my history with running. But what made you say like, so do I, uh, I want to run a marathon too. Like, how did you get there? Yeah, well, it's funny because for those who did listen to that episode of yours, our running histories are kind of very similar. Um, I also grew up hating running, like wanted to stay far away from it as possible. I remember vividly in elementary school, like trying to get out of every PE session I possibly could. <laughs> I just hated it. I would offer to like grade papers for my teachers. Like I was that kind of human try to stay in the class no matter what it took because I just could not stand the thought of even running. Um, once I signed up for swimming in like junior high, I could be in a pool all day just like you. I could swim forever, but get me to run? Absolutely not. And we even had conditioning days on swim team where we'd have to run outside and I was sick. I found a way to miss it. Absolutely. Just not doing it. Uh, played water polo through high school the same way you did. Love the water. Can swim and sweat in there for days, but get me outside on land. It's just not the place for me. It wasn't until I started like a little bit of my weight loss journey a few years ago where I was like, well, I'm going to just try to do this. I'm going to try to walk this 5K. And I kind of fell in love with the concept of these races that brings like-minded people together in a community to do these crazy races. And I remember everybody always being so nice and fun and the energy at these 5Ks because that's all I had done was just fun. Even if I didn't finish in a good time, that was for me. Walking it, everybody was together and just joyful. And that was one thing that I loved. So I started doing that a little bit more uh, when I was a little bit healthier a few years ago, kind of in my prime, as I like to call it. I did a 10K. That was my longest one. Loved it. And then, of course, life happens and there's seasons. And I kind of stopped following that path. And then last year, 2021, which is just crazy to say out loud that that was already last year, um, <laughs> I started dabbling into it again, but nothing too serious. But started getting outside here in my new state and just loving the weather and just trying to get some routes down and seeing what's out there. Um, and then, again, life happened. Stop the training. I was At that time, I was thinking, can I do a marathon this year? Like, I haven't ran at all, but I didn't really share it with too many people because I thought it was a crazy thought. In hindsight, it was. There was, like, not a whole lot of planning. I was just going to go for it. Um, so that was 
that was like October, August, September, October of last year. Um, and then again, kind of just stopped and fell off. So when you came to me with that goal of yours, it was just like, absolutely, 100%. This is what I've been wanting to do. And now I have a partner and a way to plan and a way to go through something with somebody else that's going to keep me accountable and together. Um, and what truly, really, and I, I think I've told you this before, it made me want to do it, was just watching the movie, Brittany Runs a Marathon. Yes. Um, I can resonate with so many thoughts in that movie. And it was truly empowering to see it and to know that that's a true story. So if y'all haven't seen that movie, 10 out of 10 recommend. It is so good. Um, And that's really what got me to want to be at that point. Um, And yeah, now we're going to be there in just like 10 more months. So (laughs) let's go. Uh, Yes, God willing. That's (laughs) that's true. Uh, But I love the point that you bring up that last year you didn't really have a plan um, so you, you had this goal, but you didn't really have a plan. And where this year, that was like the first thing that we did, right? Mm-hmm. We, we called our shot. We said we were going to do it. And then immediately we got on a Zoom and decided how we were going to do it, right? And like right. mapping it out. What does this look like? And we know everything's not going to go according to our plan. Although it really has so far. Yes, and like, <laughs> Um, however, we put a a plan in place and created a strategy and knew what we were going to do. And And we did it immediately. Like when it was such a fresh, exciting goal, like it was what, two, three days later, we just like went through Mm -hmm. everything for the next year and mapped it all out, which was really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And creating those milestones, which we just hit our first big milestone on the road to being marathoners uh the 5k (laughs) the 5k from hell the 5k from (laughs) hell yeah i know it's called winter dragon 5k but that shit was full of satan and fire and all the things absolutely (laughs) so We decide that on my birthday weekend, we were going to be together, and that just happened to be the week that in our training plan that we were supposed to run a 5K. So our options being fairly limited, I don't know why, but I was like pushing for the certain 5K. So I send it, and immediately Brea's like, it says challenging, yeah, reward <laughs> it. literally in the description reads, this is a very challenging route. This is a hard race. <laughs> and I highlighted it and sent it back to Taylor. And I'm like, friend, this is really hard. Are you sure this is the one we want to do? And I don't know why I had it in my head that this page was lying. That they were just, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's at a park. Like, they have no idea what they're talking about. We're just going to be running around playgrounds and in a residential area. I just had, like, this expectation of flat land. And that, sure, a 5K is challenging yet rewarding regardless. (laughs) Uh, And so Brea's really apprehensive, but I'm like, no, it'd be fine. Did you watch the YouTube video? It doesn't look that bad. And the funny part is I let you convince me of that, too. I was like, you know what? Yeah, she's probably right. It's called Winter Dragon. Maybe it's just like a big old joke all together. I don't know. So I was like, all right, let's sign up. (laughs) And uh, yes, so the train that I was captain of, like I just ran us right into a wall. And basically we get the email days before that shows the elevation gain a little bit. But we're like, well... You know, even if you're on a residential street, like you are most of the time going to have uh, elevation gain if you're not on the treadmill at home, right? Um, And so we're like, well, maybe it won't be that bad. And we pull in to the parking lot and there are rolling hills. (laughs) There's huge inclines and elevations everywhere. (laughs) Like all throughout the park, you can see they're just everywhere (laughs) yeah this park is not flat not what I imagined (laughs) at all and and we did know in advance too that it was mixed terrain 
Right. But I'm thinking like, okay, we're at a park. We're going to go over some, some dirt. Not loose gravel and loose rocks. And basically, it was a trail run. And Brand's like, what? I would have brought my trail running shoes if I had known <laughs> that it was a trail run. Uh, and so, yeah, we get started. We go through the starting line and all pumped up, a little nervous. Uh, and very from, scared. Very scared. <laughs> okay, very scared. Okay. Uh, uh, for me, the first time that I had the oh shit moment was on the first decline that was loose gravel like big rocks crevices and all these things and I was like oh my gosh I will roll an ankle just walking in my house but I'm definitely if I'm trying to run down this like loose gravel I'm gonna roll an ankle and so I started to walk and Brea was just like on it you were down that hill <laughs> and then That's I lost scary. you I know. I was so sad. I kept turning back, but I just had to keep going forward. I wouldn't have finished. It's true. Uh, we did. We did have a quick conversation before that was like, you do you mm -hmm. run your run. Um, whatever happens, like we'll all be together at the finish line. Right. Exactly. But, um, but yeah, I just, so when you turn the corner, cause one of our first hills, was like you could see it, but not real. It, not if you were paying attention. And you first turned the corner to the right to that hill. What were you thinking? I was thinking Taylor is crazy. And how did I let her convince me that this run was going to be okay? I couldn't <laughs> even think about getting up that hill without every step thinking of you and wondering what you were doing and how you were going to react when you turned the corner and saw the hill yourself. And it was, it felt like that hill lasted forever. Like oh my God. Yes. yes. So you take this hill to basically like a ridge that is still gaining elevation when you're on this ridge as well. And you can basically see the entire park at that point. You're like yes. at a peak. Um, 360 views, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so... I'm going up this hill and we were joking at the starting line that these few people actually had hike actual hiking poles. And we were like, what do they know that we don't know? Uh, and I'm going up this hill and someone with a hiking pole actually like <laughs> falls down and starts rolling. That's how steep this hill is. <laughs> And it's just like this whole moment and and so we you know we stop and we help this gentleman and he gets going back up or whatever. But almost immediately after that, I received text messages and I don't usually look at my phone, but I think I was changing a song or something. And um and it was like the perfect timing because I was just so annoyed at that I just had to stop and that I'm on this hill and there's people photographing us. And, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you're so sweet and you're just like, just keep going, bestie. And all these like motivational text messages. I can just feel it. It was like 100% best friend telepathy because. I don't know. Something was just like, I think she's, I think she's mentally struggling. Like I wasn't even worried about your physical struggle because we've done three miles many times and we were going to get through it no matter what. But I was concerned for the state of your mental health going up that peak. So I don't know if something was just like send her a text and I just didn't. And that was, and it's all true. I was so proud of you. We showed up despite our crazy fun weekend in Austin of dehydration and not prepared for this run <laughs> as we could have been. And seeing these hills and still choosing to show up, running on no sleep. And we, we trained for this moment, and it may have not been what we anticipated it to be, but we were still there. And I was so proud of me. I was so proud of you. And my only thing was for you to just keep moving forward like we've been doing because we'll cross that finish line eventually. So, totally. yeah, that was huge. Those specific words, like just keep going, were the ones that resonated the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did, 
I did need them in that moment uh, because I was sort of having this like mindset regression that threw me back into, uh, which I've talked about in episode one when I did the 52 high challenge. I did it, but I didn't enjoy it. And I didn't, and the entire time I'm comparing myself to every single person on this trail at a, <laughs> one of the worst parts of this where that came back is this family in a double stroller hauling ass up this hill. And I was just like, are you serious right now? And so I had to really pay attention to how easily it is to fall back into old mindset habits where you're just like comparing yourself. To, it's easy to say the negative thing about yourself, right? Like, why am I here? Everybody's passing me. Um, I can't do this. Why did I sign up for this? What was I thinking? Like all of those things that come into play when you're in those true hardships of testing and you're so right when you say like it's not even about the physical, it's so mental. It's like that mental warfare that's happening where you really have to just like pump yourself up and be your cheerleader and just get to the finish line. And so that moment was like really special. I'm so glad. <laughs> But you're right. I think pumping yourself up is so important. And I think for me in that moment, I ha I did have shout out to Marcel Dinkins, Dinkins, whoever, whatever you pronounce her last name. She is a Peloton tread instructor. And I had to have her shouting through my ear during that run and telling me how great I was and how strong I am, because there's no way I could have gone through that, gotten through that run without that. So Marcel, if you ever hear this podcast, you are my girl. <laughs> Thank yes, <laughs> I just took one of her classes for the first time today and I was just like loving her, loving yeah. her, her energy oh, and no. the amount that she can speak while running. No. I am oh. so impressed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We had our first we had our first ever bestie run two days prior to the 5K. And Rhea goes, oh, I kept one of my earplugs out or your earbuds out so that we can talk. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I'm not talking. I don't talk when I run. <laughs> I can't talk when I run yet. So we'll get there someday. I can have a yes, full conversation. Will. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, you are an emergency room trauma nurse. Again, at one of the best hospitals in the nation. Um, what called you to go into nursing? Like, what was that moment that happened? So I think that's, like, always one of the toughest questions for me to answer. And it's one of the most common, of course. That's just what everybody wants to know. But I think it's so tough for me because I find a hard time trying to find a way to encapsulate everything that I feel about nursing into one statement that is what led me there. But I mean, for the most part, in the most easy way, I have known that I wanted to be a nurse since I was a child. Like that was like career day question. I wanted to go into nursing. I have loved like the body and science and medicine from as long as I can remember. I remember being like eight or nine years old and sticking my grandpa's finger for his blood to get his glucose checked. So then give his little insulin shot in his little tummy. Um, for his diabetes and I remember thinking I was so cool like this is a vivid memory I have of the two of us together and I did it pretty often um, my mom played a very strong caregiver role in a lot of the people's lives around us like grandparents um, my dad when he had his cancer journey um, my dad's you know parents so uh, un uncles and aunts she kind of always showed up for everybody and was that like medical pillar and healthcare pillar even though she wasn't a nurse herself she kind of acted like one and could have could have probably been like an honorary nurse for like the people in our family so I think I loved seeing that from her and then just wanting to do that myself and then just being fascinated with like the body and and science um and then in the even more base of that is I love people I always have loved people. I went into nursing for specifically that reason to help people and to just make even the smallest difference. When my dad was going through his cancer journey, we saw his nurse more than we ever saw his doctor. And it's not to say his doctor wasn't fantastic, but his nurse was there through every chemo session, through post-op visits after his surgeries. 
Um, and to this day, I still remember her face and I remember seeing her often and just her being actively involved in his care. And I think that's kind of when I knew that I wanted to be that for somebody else's family and to be that pillar of support. Um, I also thought it was kind of powerful and fun to go into ER nursing because you're dealing with people on their most vulnerable days, um, some of the worst days of their lives, and to be like that source Mm -hmm. of peace um, and hope for them. And even just talking about it kind of brings tears to my eyes and chills down my spine because I've I've been able to be that for people. Um, I've prayed, I've laughed, I've cried with my Mm -hmm. patients and with their family members at the bedside. And it's just really rewarding. So it's definitely one of the biggest reasons why I think it's just I love, I love people. And I love learning about people and their walks and their lives and whatnot. Yes, I can resonate on that. I love the people and learning about their lives, but you got me at the blood. There's two kinds of people, right? Like I am not no blood, no body, no no thank you. Uh, So it does take, and I know everyone out there really understands that it does take a certain kind of person to do what you do. Um, So you were going through school prior to the pandemic. I was. And then that completely shifted once the pandemic hit. So what did that look like before and after? Well, okay, so I started, I, I went to an accelerated nursing program. So it, it was a much faster than most BSN programs are. So our terms were like 10 weeks and it was nine weeks of lecture. Your 10th week is finals. And then right away the next week, you start a new term. So there were no breaks. Nursing school did not wait for you in any way, shape, or form, no matter what you were going through. It was quick throw, like, cut you off if you weren't Mm -hmm. able to make it. It wasn't for the week. I mean, I think nursing in general, but specifically for, you know, my program. So before, it looked like being on campus two, three times a week for five, six-hour lecture days, uh, lots of studying, lots of clinicals, about one or two 12-hour shifts at clinical at different hospitals or on campus for a sim lab every single week, uh, a test, actual full exam every single week with quizzes in between, um, and lots of online answering like NCLEX style questions. So it was always very, very, very busy. Um, And then I went through some hard stuff in 2019 and was already having a hard time. Uh, Because of this, I was a little bit delayed in meeting some deadlines with my flu vaccine specifically, which was a requirement um, in order to continue in the program and go to clinical. I was two days late. So unfortunately, it was held back a term. This was all pre pandemic. Mm. So I was held back a term away from my friends. I was already a senior in nursing school at this point. I had my cohort and I had my core group of people that I lost because of my failure Mm. to meet the expected deadline. Um, and that was really, really heartbreaking and such a hard time for me. I think I cried about it for like two weeks, but then I'm finally like, okay, I've adjusted. I've moved on. I was forced to take a non-clinical term. So I had to just do online stuff. And in that time I was able to get a job at one of our local hospitals as as a CNA and work a little bit more, make a little bit of money, um, and just kind of get used to being at a little bit of slower slower pace after working for so hard for so long, and then to pick it up again the next term. So here comes the next term, and I'm finally in a good place mentally. I've accepted my my consequence. I'm here. I have my new cohort, and we're getting along great. And then two months later, pandemic, you're stuck at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this time in my life, my husband Jacob and I were living with my parents to allow me to work a little bit less in order to finish school strongly. Um, And because of the pandemic, my sister, my brother-in-law, and their children also moved in with us. So it was a very small, full home. Oh, and I have a puppy during this time as well. I was crazy. A very, 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 very crazy house and a lot going on. Um, And to be forced into learning from your bedroom on Zoom. Mind you, everybody is working from home. My husband, my dad's in and out. Uh, My brother-in-law's in in and out. My sister's working from home. My mom works from home every day. So everybody was there. And to be able to have to force yourself to somehow focus, listen to five, six-hour lectures on Zoom, not being in person, taking all your exams proctored on Zoom or on another software to make sure you're not cheating, um, not being able to leave the house because, you know, shelter at home, it's COVID, all the things. 
Um, and then what was the worst for me was being kicked out of all the hospital sites because students were not allowed to be there because there was not enough PPE for students. Um, they didn't even have enough for staff. So unfortunately, all of our clinicals were forced online and they were just like little programs and there was no patient care. And it was really, really, really tough. Um, it was really hard to stay focused. It was hard not to be discouraged or to feel defeated. At this point in my schooling, I was in what I feel like are the most crucial months. It was critical care, my preceptorship, which essentially means I'm going to be a full-fledged independent nurse under somebody else before I become the actual nurse, just to kind of integrate and blend everything all in. Um, for me personally, these were supposed to take place at a level one trauma center in Southern California where I was living. Um, and it was really cool to feel like I was one of the few that got into this really big hospital and I was going to learn so much and I worked so hard to get to this point and everything's coming together for me and then boom. Um, so it was very, very difficult. It took so much perseverance. It took mm -hmm. so much dedication and it took so much grit. And that's one of my favorite words that just sits with me so much because I feel like you can apply that to every aspect of your life but especially to become a nurse and on my specific journey to doing that was really really difficult and it took a lot of like I've said perseverance um, and then just accepting that even when I did get there to that point I didn't get your traditional pinning ceremony I didn't get to walk across the stage like I didn't get to have any of the celebrations that I basically dreamed about my entire years as preparing to become an RN um, so that was all incredibly difficult. Um, yeah, through a huge. Edge. I remember. So I remember in 2019 exactly where we were, exactly where we were sitting when you were telling me the story about this flu shot and how like <laughs> this silly little thing two days late and creates this whole like aftermath um, of consequences, as you said, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember yeah. sitting there and we were talking about it and just like, what is for you will not pass you. And there is a reason that this happened. And we don't know that right now. And we may not know that for years and years to come. But like, there is a reason that this happened. And I feel like the position that you are in right now, at the hospital that you're in right now, is a big reason as to like why this happened, right? So you got a big badass job at a badass hospital Correct. afterward. So how did that come to be? Correct. And that is another thing that I was going to transition into is Taylor taught me what it is for you won't pass you. And that was definitely my mantra through all of this. And yes, for some reason, I was applying to jobs while I was still in school. And a lot of them don't allow you to apply until you've graduated, but there's a few that do. So I was trying to apply to all of them just so I felt more comfortable that when I graduated school, I had a job. And for some reason, this big hospital as far east away from California, across the freaking country, came up on my radar. And I have never even set foot in this particular state at the time. And I said, what the heck? I'm just going to apply. Like, I probably will never go, but at least it's good experience. And if I do get even one interview, it's experience. And I can learn, like, what this, what applying for registered nurse jobs in an ER are going to look like. So I asked my husband just for fun, like, hey, I'm applying to this job in, in North Carolina. And um, how would you feel about moving there? Like, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but just so we can talk about it now. And he was like, yeah, I think it'd be fine. Like, I don't know. We'd have to look into it more. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just going to apply. I don't think I'll get it, but I'll apply. So I applied and there are about 300 candidates who also applied. And every time I advanced in the interview process, I was shocked. There were about four stages of interview processes, processes, <laughs> process stages. <laughs> um, and every time that I was notified that I was going to advance, I was like, absolutely no way. There's no way I get this job. Um, but I did. And here I am. There were four people who were selected of the 300. And somehow I was one of them. And it was insane to me. I didn't even tell like my family or really too many people close to me until after I had got the job that it was even a thought in my mind, because why am I going to freak people out if there's no way it was going to happen? <laughs> so I got the job before I even finished nursing school, before I took my exit, before I took my boards. Um, the day after it was offered to me, my husband and I talked about it and we said, what the heck? Like now's the time for adventure. We have no children. We have a puppy who we love and can go anywhere in the world. 
Um, my husband works from home. All the cards were in our favor, and we said, let's do it. So we packed up our car, and we drove 37, 38 hours across the country, <laughs> never, ever, ever having been in North Carolina before. And here we are, still here, and we love it. <laughs> I love it so much. That's another mm -hmm. thing, uh, exact moment that I remember you telling uh, Dustin and I, like, I'm kind of going for this. And I just knew, I just knew in that moment that it was going to happen for you. I just, you know, those, those bestie feelings. Um, but I'm so glad for all of that, that that's brought to your life and your experience and uh, just elevating your career. So but can we talk about like the root of being a nurse? You mentioned, right? Your day-to-day -day going into work is people's worst days, is their scariest days, mm -hmm. right? And that is, that has to create this like mental health struggle of when you go into work, you don't know what's going to happen, but you know it's not good. Right. Most of the time, right? Like, you right. know. <laughs> You're not walking into a normal nine to five office and thinking, oh, maybe I'll write this cool report today and I'll get, you know, accolades or something like it's just such a different career path and industry and all of that, that there are normals to you that people will never understand. 100%. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I, I think like even trying to explain it to people, you just, you just cannot grasp how that feels and the concept of that and fully conceptualize it unless you've lived it or someone really close to you has has described it for you in a way that is easy to visualize but absolutely I don't know what I'm going into when I go to work in fact our emergency department is gigantic we've got 100 beds alone just in our ED um, so I could be anywhere with I could be with the kids that day. I can be with the adults. I can be in what we call our resuscitation bays, which is where our sickest, sickest, sickest patient goes. I could be with psych patients who, you know, are going through their own things, but are very aggressive and assaultive and threatening and rude. Um, I could be with the sweetest family member, but they have the meanest, I mean, the sweetest patient, but they have the meanest family member. You truly don't know what you're going to get if I'm going to be having to do CPR that day and pound on somebody's chest, you know, or if I'm going to have to call time of death, or if it's just going to be a really good day and everybody's going to stay alive and it's going to be fun. Like it can, it can definitely shift very, very quickly. Um, and as you know, Taylor and I were talking about over the weekend, it's just like, what other job can you say that about? Like you, I've, I've been on shifts where it's just normal to get kicked or spit on or screamed at. I've been cussed out more times than I can count. It's kind of crazy to even think that on a shift where I don't get cussed out by someone, like, did that even really happen? Like, that's so rare to have. Um, it's normal to be to be scratched and to just feel unappreciated. And I think in in what I've learned as a nurse for this last you know year and a half through this pandemic, especially, is nursing is such a thankless job. And I think that applies even more so to the emergency department because it's just it's crazy. It's crazy for patients. It's crazy for families. It's crazy for staff. Um, so yeah, it is there. I love my job. I love what I do, and I love that I get to do this every day. But it is very challenging and it's exhausting and it can be incredibly tough. Mm -hmm. And that definitely goes back to what we were saying about it takes a certain kind of person because mm -hmm. every day you have to own your resilience that like, oh my gosh, I saw this today. I dealt with this today. I was called this today. I was hurt by a patient today. And then I have to go home and there's the potential that I do that 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 happens again the next day, right? right. And so it's just like those you your toughness and like how do you what drives you to show up the next day knowing kind of what is in store for you? Yeah, I think what really keeps me driven at work is uh, my team. I think that if it weren't for some of the people that I work with, it'd be impossible to get through those tough days. Um, I work alongside some really tough people, and I think our teamwork is what keeps all of us going. 
Um, the fact that we all show up for each other in those moments. Hey, are you okay? Hey, how can I support you? What can I do for you? Hey, do you want me to take over for that patient's care so you can go take a lap and just go take a walk? Hey, do you want coffee? I think that really keeps me feeling thought about and keeps me feeling protected. And even if it doesn't come from like the upper people at our hospital, it comes from each other. And I think that shows a lot. Um, I do work with a pretty good team most nights and I absolutely love that. And I think that's what keeps me driven. And then I think also just remembering my why, you know, even if it's for that one patient who I made a difference for in my entire 12 hours or that one family member who felt supported because of my care, just one, like the other 10 can cuss me out all day. But if I get one (laughs) to say, thank you, I appreciated you. Like you made a difference today to my, to my family's care. Great. Like I love that. That is why I joined this crazy career for. Um, And then just to be able to make people feel good, my sweet old ladies or my cancer patient who just wants to be, you know, talked to and understood and validated that this is really crazy. Those kind of things keep me driven for sure. And the resilience component is huge. I think you just have to know who you are. You have to have the self-awareness as a nurse, as your person outside of nursing to know who you are, who you really are, and to not let those negative energies or comments affect you, um, and to just understand that these patients are having a hard time. You really have to step outside of yourself and just leave it all behind, and, and that takes resilience, and it takes strength, and it takes discussion and support. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, and you know I'll preach community all day long, mm-hmm. so... Um, as a bestie, it warms my heart that you do have your community out there that understands what you're going through. Cause like you said, not everyone's going to get it mm-hmm. unless you're in it or you're very close to it. Not everybody's going to get it. Um, and so that you have that community is really, really precious, um, that you're able to get that support from each other and really talk things out. And I love that. So what's like the ultimate goal? Um, well, I know there's many directions you can go in there nursing. Is, there is. And if anyone's interested in being a nurse, I would absolutely recommend it because yes, there's so many avenues of nursing. It's crazy. Um, for me personally, I'm currently in the process of applying to grad school. I have the goal of becoming a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Um, I love the human brain and I think it just falls back into loving people and wanting to help people. Um, And this would be in like a different way and to just more help what's going on here in the brain and development wise um, within a human. Um, So that's my big, big, big goal. Um, This year, I also want to become a SANE nurse. That's spelled S-A-N-E. And it stands for a sexual assault nurse examiner. Um, So that's also on my radar for this year. It's It's a lot of training and hours of doing exams. Um, But I think that plays into my big, big goal of opening up my own practice someday as a psych provider after I get my doctorate of nursing practice and just work with people who have been through trauma and sex crimes and stuff along those lines. Um, So it all kind of fits that umbrella for me of like psych and healthcare um, and like the law enforcement side and being that liaison between like law enforcement and healthcare as a sane nurse. So it's all under that huge umbrella, but it's a lot of little things that will hopefully some someday in the far future lead me to one big thing. So big old dream. Oh my God. Big old dream. <laughs> you know, that's what we do here. So exactly. I love it. I love it. And that you already like have your plan that you want and are already going after it. So no one can deny you are the ultimate badass. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you heard it here first. So when yeah. that practice yeah. opens, you can come back to episode four and you heard it here first. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> love that. Love that. Okay. So we talked about how we became friends and we have fostered that relationship. And so Bray and I came, became friends first. Then we introduced our husbands. Then we introduced family. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our, our moms have their little Instagram. They, they watch each other. <laughs> you know. um, and then we kind of introduced you guys to our friends group. And it has just kind of organically grown into 
there's a group chat with like the husbands and then <laughs> we're really good friends. And so, um, but recently you said something that made me really feel like, you know what? I have, I, I have too. And you said, I prayed for a BFF like you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's so hard growing up. You have, you know, your junior high friends and then the mm-hmm. high school friends. And then if, uh, college is the avenue that you go into. You have friends from that. Um, but going through life and really finding your person who understands you, who supports you, we're, uh, I think one of the biggest things is feeling that efforts are balanced, mm-hmm. right? It's not like one person is constantly doing something more than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess like what makes you feel like what makes a BFF for you? Um, I think basically everything you just said, and I think what made me say that is I absolutely have. I've been praying for a good, solid girlfriend for for a while because you're right. I do have, I've had friends through all these different stages of my life, but I feel like when we're here now and in adulthood and we have all these different things going on in our lives and we're so far apart, but can somehow be so intentional still is really powerful and really makes a good BFF for me. Um, and then someone who is unconditional, someone who's supportive, someone who you can trust to call you out on your bullshit, but <laughs> to do it with love and with grace at the same time. Um, I think truth and grace are really huge components of a good friendship and not more than one over the other, right? It's got to be like, hey, I love you, but this is what we can be doing better. And I really appreciate about that about you is you always... You have like the best friend hat and your coach's hat that play really well into into our friendship and our lives together. Um, so I think for me, it's showing up for each other. Like you said, not anyone feeling like they're putting in more effort at any point. And like with any relationship, there's going to be times where one is able to invest more. But just to have that as a balanced part of the friendship, I think is incredibly important. Um, yeah, and I think it's really showing up, communicating, being intentional and being truthful. And I think that's what makes you my best BFF. (laughs) Uh, I agree. I agree on all of those friends. And I think that it's been really special throughout the years to like watch it come to this point Mm -hmm. um, where it just is natural, right? It's Mm -hmm. not like it has to be overthought or anything. Mm -hmm. And you don't really even have to think like, wait, can I say this in front of this person? You just know like... (laughs) I'm going to say whatever I'm going to say. And and again, you might call me on my bullshit or you might, you know, that might be the moment that you're like, oh, I love you, even though you did that or said that or whatever. Um, So I I think that the the judgment free, the unconditional love is like so special. The safety, you have to feel safe. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, one of the things I've appreciated the most, uh, and I don't know that I've actually like vocalized this, um, is that in my business, you have always like showed up as a client, not as like, oh, let me check this out. Let me see what you're doing. And I expect you to give it to me for free or, um, or just to not be involved at all, right? Like you have shown up, you have invested in yourself through Taylor Made Tasty. And I have always like just truly appreciated that because like, you know, what you invest in, in what you do and your career and your industry is of value. And if somebody is going to ask you how you got there, then they're learning all of those things that you just learned for the past five years right Mm -hmm. and and so there's value in that and if you're gonna coach somebody on how you got to where you are like there should be some um compensation investment also skin in the game you know when you invest something you put skin in the game and I'm a big proponent of that um but I just think that it's such a important piece of a friendship that if you do have businesses like that or if you're able to support in that way or like you know nurses day I'm like loving on you because mm-hmm. I want you to feel that right and so I I just have always appreciated that and that doesn't come from every aspect of my life and so I really really love you for that. Aww. 
Of course. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're freaking killing it. And I love to be able to support that and watch you grow too. So thank you. Thank you. I love you being in the community. Um, all right. Well, I first just want to thank you for being here, for sharing your expertise. And I know there's like tons of little gems that people are going to take away from you and really resonate with the listeners and your vulnerability and your openness to not just sugarcoating that being a nurse is amazing, but also it's like really freaking tough. And, um, and your skin is tougher and your mind is tougher and your soul is tougher and you do it for all the right reasons. So that is beautiful and inspiring and I love you. I love you more, Bestie. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, thank you for being here. Um, if people want to connect with you outside of this episode, where can they catch ya? Um, you can find me on Instagram at the gritty nurse. That's d-r-i-t-t-y nurse um it's being revamped so you shall see me on there so much more in the near future um and i'm also on tiktok and peloton under the same name if you want to be peloton friends so anything yes. you can find me on is at the greedy nurse and i'd love to connect with you <laughs> thank you so much Brea. all right it is our time for the quote of the episode and this week's quote is something that came up over and over in my mind on the 5k and it is it is not faith until it looks like it won't happen and you still believe so I have this quote written on my wall and throughout the difficulties of the 5K, the amount of faith that you have when you put your mind into it, your body into it during hardships, during the hurdles, during the time where it doesn't look like your goal is going to happen, but you choose to believe anyway, that is where the magic happens and that is where you can go get to any goal. I thought it would be really fun to have our guest of the week also share a quote of the episode. So, Brea, what you got for us? Okay, so this quote definitely is what helped me feel like I was still going to get there and was just like a way to look back on my success and remember this for future goals and future successes. So it is a Louise Pastor quote, and it is, let me tell you about the secret that has led me to my success. My strength lies solely in my tenacity. And I just love that one because that is where our strength should be. Let's be tenacious. Let's be strong. Let's persevere and keep your strength there because that will make you successful. Yes, I love that. Okay, everyone, take that tenacity into your week. That was beautiful. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in my community. I am so glad you showed up today. And let's go get there. Look at you crushing it. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Tailor Made Tasty podcast. My hope is you always leave with a takeaway to implement in your own goal crushing journey. I would love if you could take a moment to leave a review. And if you're looking for a community of goal boss badasses just like you, be sure to check out tailormadetasty.com backslash membership.